What do you make of the whole VADES, you know, um, initiative in the first place? I think it's um, a very unique opportunity that the high level individuals have to regularize uh, their tax status. Uh, it relates to them looking at their previously undisclosed uh, assets mm -hmm. and um, income and paying up uh, the required uh, tax uh, liability on those uh, assets and, uh, and income. Mm -hmm. In exchange, uh, they will enjoy the benefits of not paying uh, or getting forgiveness uh, for interest on such uh, uh, delayed taxes, uh, taxes mm -hmm. and also get an assurance that they will not be prosecuted you know, for not paying of their, their taxes. I, I think it's unique. Because over the years, the compliance level has been very, very low. Uh, if you look at um, taxation revenue for the country compared to other countries, very, very low. Uh, you have uh, uh, tax to GDP at about 6%, compared to Ghana that doing about 15.6%, and South Africa are doing about almost 27%. Uh, Similar countries are doing about 35%. That's why the government are taking an initiative of moving the, the GDP to uh, tax to GDP to, to about 15% in the mm -hmm. first uh, instance. And this bid, it's a good opportunity you know, to one the tax base and give uh, h and the opportunity to realize their, their startup. They, they, they have a limited time of nine months, uh, which expired by 31st of, of March. Mm -hmm. And during this period, they, are, they, they should come forward and fill their form to make the declaration. I say as fantastic as this sounds, the yes. conditions, the time frame that has been given. Yes. Do you think, I mean, do you see Nigerians, you know, high net worth Nigerians stepping forward? Do you think clients you even cater to would actually come forward to say, look, I, I haven't, you know, complied all these years. This is what I have. Pardon me. Yes, they are. They are stepping forward. First, most of them are doing a tax health check on themselves. Okay. To look at their status and see where they are and uh, in terms of what they've done in the past and look at what they ought to have done in the past and they're going forward to make that declaration. I think one of the session seminars that were held by the Federal Minister of uh, Finance and uh, uh, the Revenue Service, mm -hmm. uh, they've gotten up to about 14 billion in the, in the first uh, four months and we believe that compliance will be higher towards the deadline of March 31st. You see, today the, the tax rate, the highest bracket of tax of personal income tax is doing about 24% and the effective tax rate Today is just about 19%. Compared to some years ago, when probably most of the assets and income were accumulated, rates were actually about 55% mm. in terms of uh, personal income taxes. So it's an opportunity. We believe that the tax rates here today are lenient on the personal income tax side, and this this window ought to be ought to be. Um, taking over the h and and are doing that. And do you think yeah. Nigerians might be a bit skeptical about the whole move? Maybe they might say, well, that's an opportunity for them to actually get me arrested, or the fact that they're actually thinking to themselves, what am I going to put forward? So mm -hmm. I'm going to ask this question. You know, for someone who really wants to step forward, yeah. let's be very realistic. Yeah. There are those who will not have all the money they're supposed to pay to the government. I mean, for yeah. someone who hasn't been paying tax mm -hmm. for 10 years, mm -hmm probably they just give you what they've accumulated in the past two years to begin with. Yeah. So is that acceptable? What do you think the authorities are looking out for when you come forward? Would they take anything you're offering at that point in time or would they ask you for much more? No. Okay. You ought to declare fully and honestly mm -hmm. all your assets and income and then they will, do, and they will determine what the tax liabilities are. Is it in a particular period of time or maybe within a year? How does that work? No. You okay. ought to go back yourselves uh, probably today, in terms of the laws, there is that um, a statute limit of six years. Okay. Where uh, beyond that, uh, you ought not to. They ought not to look at you again. However, there's also a window that if the revenue determine that you did not honestly declare, declare your income, then they can determine a limit for you to go back. Yeah. But what asking you to voluntarily come up, come forward, and tell us what assets you own, what income you've earned over the years, and whether you paid appropriate taxes. Now, if you determine the tax liability and you don't have liquidity to make the payment immediately, they're also offering you about three years' time, time space to be able to pay. So you can actually negotiate. And so yes, for, you, for you to pay the outstanding, yes, the outstanding but you yes. begin to pay the current oh, from that particular day. Subsequently, we ought to expect that if you are complied fully, mm -hmm. you should subsequently comply. Okay. Okay. In fact, that's also a proviso that if in subsequent years you don't then comply fully, they might actually go back to the rebate they're giving to you, you know, for this, uh, for this disclosure during this period. So the whole idea is that come forward, declare fully, pay your taxes. If you're not in a position to make the payment immediately, you can negotiate an instrumental payment over three years. Interest will apply mm -hmm. for that. And for, for your benefit for doing this is that you'll be prosecuted. 
and your past due interest also will, will be waived there as well. But subsequently, you ought to comply for it because that, that's, that's what the law says. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. I understand yeah. this. While this is actually, of course, laudable, mm -hmm. like you have said, it's also mm -hmm. an opportunity for the FIRS mm -hmm. to, you know, update its data, Certainly. of course, with, you know, with records of um, individuals, what they're earning, what the business is about. Now, for those who do not step out mm -hmm. after the deadline, yes. Who is the FIRS going to go after? Are they going to go after those they've already captured? I mean, there are those who they're hoping will come forward. What happens to those individuals who haven't gotten away with it in the past okay. five years? Okay, it's interesting that we talked about compliance being very low. Compliance has been low because over the year, the government has done very well in capturing taxation for, formal, uh, for those employed in the formal sector. Mm -hmm. Those in the formal sector who are self-employed, the professional, the consultant advisor, have not been paid fully, mm. incidentally, at this time. The revenue have access to so much information. They know much more than they knew in the past. For instance, for the BVN exercise, they have access to your bank accounts. They are currently looking at the customs in terms of the, the duties you are paying. I look at the company that are paying those duties. They are looking at the central bank in terms of FX uh, uh, purchases for the CBN and who are the people purchasing this FX. They look at NCCA in terms of uh, patronage of uh, airlines, how much tickets you are buying. They are also looking at those who have been doing withholding taxes on some of, of some of the payments you are receiving. Mm -hmm. So that they are right now, we believe there's a, a, a very treasure shove of uh, information available to revenue for them to then come look at individuals who did not participate in the VAID after night 31st. But well, you agree that the informal space remains the most uncaptured? Before now, they made the most of it, but now I can tell you that with information, available to revenue, it's going to be very difficult for people to continue to invest taxation. You think so? Yes, I, I, I know that I think so. Okay, it is a fact. The Federal Mission of Finance, together with revenue, are running a, what they call a project, a, project, a, a, a project currently, where they are deliberately accumulating information on high net worth individuals mm -hmm. from all the multiple sources. And also what it did mention also is that, related to the VAID, is the, that the federal government has also signed up some protocols mm -hmm what they call a senior information protocol with about 144 countries, where they're going to share information on the assets being held in those countries by Nigeria national. Those, those assets information are going to be available to revenue officials. There's also reporting on financial transactions as well across the globe because there's a lot of interest in tracking illicit, illicit uh, phone flows currently. And in that process, they, they actually keep a lot of information. This yeah. information that they have globally on Nigerian nationals are going to be available to revenue. It's, it's not going to be like uh, uh, previously. What you have to you see, you see, in terms of standard economic theory, right, compliance for taxpayers is related to the, their benefit, what the benefit that they, that they enjoy for not complying and the cost of uh, non-compliance. Mm -hmm. And the cost of non-compliance related to the probability of penalty, probability of being caught, you see, that's what they relate to their benefit, to know whether to comply or not yeah. to comply. But currently, the probability of being caught has become higher because of information available to the revenue official. So that is your, the, so it now clearly outweighs the benefit of tax uh, uh, tax uh, evasion. Mm -hmm. And besides, the penalties for not paying tax is it's severe get, in terms of uh, uh, prison sentences and all that. I guess 2018 yes. is really going to be an interesting year when it comes to taxation in Nigeria. I'm also okay. looking, you know, standing by to see what's going to um, play out eventually. Thank you so much. Emeka Awoka there, partner and head family wealth and private clients at Anderson Tax.